Hey, my name is Anthony and I am from Kenya and in this video I'm going to discuss 15 ninja tips and tricks that are going to help you when preparing for your African safari and when you actually come for your African safari. So let's get into it. Tip number one, take your time before choosing the company that you're going to go with to Africa for your African safari. Now the reason this is, is because this is, as I've actually I've discussed it in a number of videos. Check out the videos right there or there. I normally confuse where that card is. So, but I've discussed a lot about what to choose uh, when choosing an African uh, safari company, what things you need to look out for and so on. And this is the absolutely most important decision of your safari. You are going to regret it if you make a rush choice because you probably will be, you choose a company that is not optimum for your kind of configuration, probably a trip that is very crowded when you want it solo. So take your time before choosing. Uh, do a lot of research. Um, inquire from a number of places and a number of different companies and compare both in terms of how much they're charging to what they're offering, which kinds of accommodations they're going to give you. Um, all of these small details, they are the types that are, they are the things that are going to affect whether your safari is going to be awesome or lowsome. <laughs> um, that's actually pretty lame, but hey. Tip number two, carry both cash and a card, whether that be a credit card or a debit card, but carry both. Don't carry too much cash. Don't carry all the cash you'll need for the time because there are a lot of ATMs, but you also need to carry a card with you. So let's get into this particular point. When you're coming to Africa on an African safari, most of the places you're going to be going to will be having the option of you being able to like use a card when you're going to, like, you'll be able to swipe and pay for things using the card. There are a number of places that may not accept you to be able to swipe or, like, may not be able to accept your card. And that's the reason you need cash. Now, will they accept the money in your local currency? Like, the currency that you use in your own home country? No. They'll actually want money in their own currency. Like, here in Kenya, we'll want shillings, uh, Kenyan shillings. And so my advice to you is... Carry your card with you, and once you arrive at the airport, go to an ATM and withdraw whatever amount of money in the local currency. So whether it's in Kenyan shillings, withdraw it in Kenyan shillings, and withdraw roughly, again, it will depend on how big your group is, and there are a lot of factors around that, but withdraw roughly around um, $10, no, that's 1,000 shillings, no, um, $100, per individual that is going to be with you in the group. Now again, this is going to vary depending on how many days you're going to be there and so on, but getting around that much from the ATM uh, will mean that you have at least sufficient cash to be able to do whatever it is you need to do in, when you need to make payments in cash, but that you, will not have, um, that you will not have too much cash with you on you. Now, the other thing that is really important is that with the card that you're going to have, Keep that card and use it in very few places. Don't use it everywhere. Use it in like your hotel, places that you could probably trust. And if the place looks a bit sketchy and they say that they accept um, the card, give them cash instead because you'll have at least sufficient cash to pay for most of the smaller items you need. Remember that you probably already paid for, um, you already paid for your hotel and you already paid for a lot of these other things like the, your, your safari itself ahead of time. And so the expenses that you're incurring at this point will be things like tips, buying souvenirs and so on. And so use cash for some of those some of those expenses. But if it's a place that you feel that it's trustworthy, like your hotel, you can use your card at that point. Tip number three, make sure that you come with a phone that can accept GSM. Now, let me explain what this means. Now, here in Kenya, and a lot of Africa is probably the same, the kind of uh, phone network they have is called GSM. Now, GSM is, they use SIM cards for that, and the, the, the difference between that, the, the other type of network that exists is CDMA. And so if you bring with you a smartphone that has uh, that accepts a SIM card, a GSM SIM card, it means that you'll be able to communicate and like use the Kenyan network when you're going to be traveling all around. Now I'm speaking about Kenya, but it could apply for all the other places in, um, in Africa. And the reason why this is useful is if you actually run into a problem, you want to be able to communicate with people. Now, over and above that, you want to communicate with, let's say, your tour guide. Let's say when you wake up in the morning, you probably want to give them a phone call. You won't be able to do that unless you actually carry that phone with you. Now, once you arrive in your country, of, like your destination country, 
um, you need to get a line. Um, that's what we call it. Well, a, a, a SIM card. Now, the SIM card is going to enable you to communicate with the people in the country. Why you do not want to come and buy the phone here is because you probably are not going to get a really good phone. It's not going to be set up. Now, check with your, check with your own phone, the phone that you currently use, as to whether it's possible for you to use it internationally, whether it's unlocked, it's SIM unlocked, and I can be able to use any other SIM card and um, bring it with you when you come. But the other great benefit, especially if you're going to be coming to Kenya, is that you can be able to use mobile money. Now, in Kenya, we use something called M-Pesa. Now, M-Pesa is like mobile, Pesa is uh, the Swahili word for money, so mobile money. Um, when you arrive at the airport, you're going to want to buy a SIM card. When you're buying the SIM card, make sure that they register you for M-Pesa. Ask them to, reg to register you for the mobile money network. They'll use your passport, um, the passport number, uh, and so they'll take a copy of your passport, probably or probably not, um, to register you for M-Pesa. And now with that, you'll be able now, remember my conversation previously about carrying cash with you? You can put all of that cash into your mobile payment platform. And the reason why this is useful is because almost all of Kenya uses M-Pesa. Everyone, almost everyone uses M-Pesa. Almost every business uh, accepts M-Pesa, big or small. Whether it's a very big business or a very small vendor uh, on the side of the road, will accept M-Pesa. So it's, it's much safer than carrying cash with you. And again, bundled with all the other benefits that you're going to have um, of being able to communicate with people and so on, you'll have a really good deal. And so I advise you, make sure that you buy uh, a SIM card when you arrive, but you can't use that SIM card unless you came with uh, a GSM uh, enabled uh, um, smartphone. Now, why, why a smartphone and not a dumb phone? Because again, you can use it for a number of things uh, over and above just um, over and above just communicating on call. And most Kenyans use WhatsApp, and so if you already use that back home, then you can just come and register that here and use that for your your purposes. Now. When you arrive, um, over and above just buying the SIM card, you'll need to load it up with uh, minutes for you to be able to talk. Now, the Kenyan plans work slightly differently. You'll see, again, I've discussed it in other videos and I'll try to link them up there, but um, you can be able to use different kinds of, um, of data plans and you buy them ahead of time. You actually pre-load. Uh, pre uh, your data plans and so um, either both your data plans and your um, and your calling uh, plans now if you're coming to kenya i advise that you use safaricom now safaricom has the best network in the country it has um, it's most it's the most reliable for someone like you coming to um, kenya for a safari now in my experience somewhere around like two thousand shillings that's around twenty dollars is sufficient to as your communication budget for the entire time of your stay if you're going to be staying here for like two weeks that's more than sufficient for all that you're going to need during that time so tip number four make a copy of your passport and um, your credit cards now the reason why this is important and actually when you keep make that copy make sure that you keep it uh, away from the said passport and uh, and credit card keep them probably in your luggage well, you're carrying your passport and credit card with you. The reason why this is important is in case, now I hope this doesn't happen to you, but in case you actually lose those things, either through pickpocketing or that you actually lose them, you'll be able to have copies to help you either file like a police report, be able to like process your things. So having those copies with you is going to be really absolutely crucial uh, just in case something bad happens. Obviously, we hope and you're going to take care and uh, none of these things happen because it's the nightmare of any traveler to lose their passport or credit cards. But you'll be able to process some of these things much faster if you actually have copies of them. Now, that's a quick tip. Let's go to the next one. Tip number 4.5. Like this video. I hope you're enjoying it. So please like it. It really helps out the channel. It helps this video get discovered by more people. So if you actually are enjoying this and you're finding this helpful, please give it thumbs up tip number five use a money belt now money belts are a way for you to be able to store your passport and credit card 
and any other smaller valuable items in a way that is going to be more difficult for pickpockets to take them off your pockets. Now, the reason why this is useful is because most of the times you're go probably, if you're going to be walking around uh, in the city and so on, the, the fact that you are a foreigner, you'll be easy to spot for anyone who wants to do something nefarious. <laughs> Fancy word, nefarious. Uh, and so the, the, one of the ways of uh, taking caution is that you have a money belt that you'll wear that will keep some of those valuables away from uh, very available places. Tip number six. Tip number six. Make sure that you carry with you your ice information. No, I'm not saying that you carry with you ice, like the one that melts. <laughs> no, I'm sure you probably already know this. Carry your in case of emergency information with you, uh, probably in your money belt or somewhere around you. Um, these are contacts of people who should be contacted in case you run into an emergency, things like your blood group and so on. Again, you want to prepare for the worst that could happen, but hope that it doesn't, that it doesn't happen and prepare that it doesn't happen, but also make sure that in the event that it would happen, uh, you're going to be safe. Now, place your, the contact of the person who you could, would be contacted if in case you're in a, an emergency, probably like if you have any allergies and so on, like put any information that any emergency personnel would need to know in that um, in that piece of paper and I'm sure there are a lot of templates online that you can use to just write that stuff down you do not want it to happen to you but you do want to have that information in case something like that does happen to you tip number seven I'm going to run out of fingers by the way when I get to 15 <laughs> so tip number seven uh, you want to make sure that the kind of tour company that you're using is going to be having emergency evacuation as part of the cover. So make like inquire from them. Do they have like emergency evacuation from the safari park? So the, one of the things about it is that these places are really remote. They are very far away from any kind of medical assistance. So what, there is a company, there is, is actually a, a, a big organization here in Africa that helps with stuff like this, and it's called AMREF, AMREF Fra Flying Doctors. And so what they do is that they actually have emergency um, planes, uh, aeroplanes, um, that are ambulances. Um, and so they're able to go pick you up if you probably get into an accident or something bad happens when you're out uh, in the remote places. They're able to pick you up and bring you to uh, really good emergency um, health the people, <laughs> uh, either in Nairobi or like in any one of the major cities. And some of these emergency evacuation covers also cover for you to be flown back to your home country in case there's something bad that has happened to you and you need um, additional um, like medical attention. And so inquire from the company that you're using, they actually have this because if they do not, then you'll have to cater for that bill yourself and you do not want to go through that kind of problem. Now, in case they do not have it, you could contact AMREF yourself and um, inquire from them what it takes to get that cover. It's usually not very expensive and you can get it from them directly yourself. But most of the times, the companies themselves have that as part of the, uh, part of the agreement. But make sure if they do not, that you get it for yourself. Tip number eight. Or is it eight? Or is it... Eight. <laughs> tip number eight. Um, actually forgot what that tip was. Okay, tip number eight. Make sure that you do not drink tap water. Now, is it that all tap water is bad? No. But as I've said before, I'll put that video up there or somewhere there, is that tap water is not very consistent here in Kenya. Um, or other places in Africa. There are places where you may have like very clean tap water that is really great to drink many places actually but there are a number of places where that tap, water, that tap water is not going to be very clean and so just to be safe drink bottled water i've talked about that in the past and make sure that you um avoid any sketchy sources of water so use brands that are known um i would also encourage you if if probably this is something you you um you're keen on you probably like hydrating a lot get a big let's say five liter and have it with you in like your hotel and stuff and then have the normal reusable bottle and refill it in case you don't want to throw away plastic all, all over the place uh then get that big bottle and continue refilling it and so you'll have um gotten a good source of water without like ruining the environment tip number nine you want to use soft luggage what i mean by soft luggage is you know most of the suitcases have like a spine that is really hard that keeps the structural integrity of the suitcase 
You don't want to use that when you're coming on an African safari. If you're going to be flying from the capital city, let's say Nairobi, JKIA, um, to your national park, or let's say you're going to come to Arusha and travel to your national park, they, they require that you have soft luggage in, as, um, as part of your, um, your plane luggage for those small aircraft. And so you, you may find yourself having to buy a new piece of luggage or leave some luggage behind because it's, it was like the hard suitcase especially the very hard ones. So carry very soft luggage that does not have any spines in it or is not hard because you'll be unable to carry it with you when you go into your African safari, especially if you're going to be flying there. So tip number 10. Now I've run out of fingers. Not sure what I'm going to use for the rest of the tips. <laughs> but tip number 10, you want to dress in layers. Now layers, what I mean by layers is that you want to wear, wear a lot of light clothing, that every piece of clothing you need to wear is going to need to be light. Um, and so as you're going to be wearing it from the, let's say the vest underneath the shirt and then a, a, a soft uh, jumper or like fleece and then something else on top, all of those need to be light, but they need to be a lot of them because now here's the reason why. Um, Africa has a very wide do you know range, uh, like the daily range of temperature is going to be high. Um, like the range is, would probably come from like very low, let's say at 10 degrees Celsius um, to above like let's say 28 degrees and that's like a really huge, now 10 degrees will make you a bit chill, <laughs> not like chill but like you're going to be chilled. Uh, it's going to be cold and like 28 is going to be very very hot so in, in the 10 degrees uh, celsius you probably want to have all your layers on and as the temperature continues going up and up and up you will then shed those layers as you go in your in, on your safari and it starts getting cold again you'll put them back on now the the difference between that is that you could carry just one large coat and the problem is it's an on and off situation where you either have it on or off and if you have it on, you're too hot, or if you have it off, you're too cold. Again, that's the reason why you need to wear layers. So tip number 11, that's, that's what we are doing now. <laughs> tip number 11, uh, make sure that you go to the beach. Now, uh, what I mean by this, obviously, it's self-explanatory. Make sure you travel to the coast of whatever country you're going to be in. Now, whether it's in South Africa, go to the beach there. The beaches in East Africa are really beautiful and like really nice. Now, here's the benefit. These, you're going to have gone, like traveled thousands of miles, of used miles in this case, Americans. And you're going to have traveled thousands of miles to go from, um, to come from your home country uh, to, to, um, to Africa for your safari. And you're going to have a really awesome adventure in your African safari. But now the problem is, you'll just have enjoyed just one safari. Now, going to the beach means that you're going to be able to enjoy two, like, vacations. Um, by the way, safari in Kenya is not the like jungle thing you go to see animals. Safari is a Swahili word, Kiswahili word for uh, travel, like journey or vacation. And so you'll have been able to do two safaris, two journey, two journeys, two vacations. You'll, one will be at the um, national park where you'll see all of these animals. The other one will be like one or two days at the beach and you'll be able to bundle those two things and probably for just a slight amount increase in your um, in your safari cost. So my advice is do not skip going to the beach. It's going to be something that you're going to find interesting and enjoyable. Again, you may probably have a beach where you're from and so you may think, oh, why do it? But I'm telling you, you probably are going to enjoy it and it's going to be for such a small additional amount that it's definitely worth doing. Tip number 13. <laughs> Tip number 13. Make sure that you spend at least, at very least, um, roughly around five days uh, for your safari. Now, uh, like budget, like actual five calendar days for your safari. The reason why I'm advising for um, about five days is that you'll have factored in for the travel. Let's say if you're coming to Nairobi um, and you're coming to Kenya, you're going to have like two days of actual road travel. And then the other three are going to be in the actual, like at the actual safari destination. And that's a very minimum. Um, if you budget for way less than that, probably you've come for a conference or something like that and you want to go to the Masai Mara, I would advise that you probably don't. Just go to like uh, nearer national parks like Nairobi National Park or uh, Savo uh, in case, in, instead of going to all the way to Masai Mara because if you spend too little time, you may probably miss some of the animals you may have in mind of going to see. For instance, 
um, as I've mentioned before, there are animals that are rarer to find, like leopards and so on. And so if, if you, you really want to see those kinds of animals you are, and you spend too little time, you probably are going to miss them. Now, you may be lucky, as some people have commented before in my posts, that they saw a lot of animals, all of them, like big five, within, like within one day. But it's not always guaranteed. Remember, this is the wild. And so you, you, you do not know where the animal is going to be. And so you'd rather, the, your best bet is spending a bit more time at the actual destination um, than spending less time. So tip number 14, make sure that you use something else than your phone camera. Now, the reason why this is important is because your phone camera, while good, and it may be, probably have like really good resolution, you actually are not going to be having like a very good way of zooming into like being able to find animals very well. Now the thing about it is that with phone cameras, you, you, they are really good for portraits and stuff. They are not good for safari. This is because they don't have a very long zoom lens. And with long zoom lenses, they allow you to be able to find animals that are really far away. Now, you'll find with African safaris is that it's, it's not very easy to be able to come very near animals. Unless you go off-road, which is not normally advised, you're not going to be able to find like the animals like right next to your vehicle. And so most of the times you're going to need to zoom in to be able to find those animals. And if you're using just your phone, you're not going to be able to capture really good images of that. So I advise you to use, if you don't have your own camera, use a company like Lens Rental. Um, and I'll link them in the description below. You're able to like rent a camera, really high, really good camera for um, a fraction of the cost of buying it. And you'll be able to capture really amazing images. So tip number 15, make sure that you're going to use the appropriate power adapter when coming to Kenya or Africa for your safari. Now, the thing about it is most of, well, most, there are a number of places, the power, the way the power works in many different countries is different. And so you, the power that you have in your own country is probably going to be slightly different from the power that we have here in our country in, in, in Africa. And so you need to be able to get a power adapter that works for the safari country you're going to. So check out which safari country you're going to, make sure you know what power adapter they probably would need, or if you need a power adapter at all, the kinds of sockets they have, the wall plugs that they have, so that you have the right thing, so that you do not come and are not able to charge your devices, and you're not able to like get anything powered on, because you do not carry the right kind of plug to plug into the walls. So I'm going to show you one of the, what, what we use here in Kenya, and you can probably, and I'm showing it now, and this is the kind of plug that you usually would, the kind of wall plug, the kind of wall socket that you have to plug into. So make sure when you're buying your power adapter or when you're buying the kind of adapter you need, that you, you can be able to plug into this. But also remember that here in Kenya, we use 200 and something, I think 250, 240 volts. And probably I think in the US they use 110. And so you need a way for that power to be stepped down before it gets into your device, before it actually melts it. So make sure you carry the right power adapter when coming to Africa for your safari. I hope that you found these tips helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help the channel and you'll have a good feeling because you did. Now, if this is the kind of content that you enjoy, I encourage you to subscribe. I have done a lot of videos about going on safari and coming to Africa and coming specifically to Kenya. I live in Kenya and so a lot of these things are things that I know from personal experience or that I have done a lot of research around it to make sure that you actually get really good information. And so I've packed a lot of that information in this channel. And so please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and watch a lot more of the content, especially if you're preparing to come for an African safari. It doesn't cost you anything to just watch through the content and find out whether there's something that you missed. A lot of these tips, I've discussed them in many of the other places in the channel. Um, and again, this is a condensed version of all that you've seen in all of the other places in the channel. There are a number of things that I've introduced that are new that you may not have had before, but I hope that you've enjoyed it. And until next time, keep traveling.